How many solar panels would it take to provide electricity for all of Germany? <laughs> I love these things because it just the reason I love these kind of studies because it just shows you the insanity of the renewable energy people. Remember, solar is not renewable, by the way. Solar power is not renewable. It's just not. If it is, then describe for me, please. I, I invite you to do this. How many solar panels will give you uh, 300 watt, 30% efficiency even? How many solar panels would it take to build one solar panel from scratch? All right. So all in the world you have is solar panels. You have nothing else. You got solar panels. How many of those solar panels will it take to build one brand spanking new solar panel from scratch? Yeah. And until you can tell me that, then we know these aren't renewable. It's just not, never mind the silicon and all that. It's just the silicon. All right, but anyways, let's do this because this is fun. I'll always love this. Uh, here's from uh, the Social Science Research Network, uh, Dateline, February 2021. I'll put a link in the show notes. How many kilo kilometers squared of solar panels in Spain and how much battery backup would it take to power Germany? Why Spain, Josh? Why? Well, will keep reading. I'm just going to read the abstract and I'll let you bring it, read it for yourself. And I hopefully you do, especially if you're a big proponent of green energy. I, I hate to say you just don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Germany is responsible for about 2% of the total global annual CO2 emissions from energy. That's it. Total of 2% in Germany. And yet they're like, we're going to fight the bad CO2. You mean that plant fertilizer? Yes. We, I mean, well, well, no, yeah, well, I guess I do. Yeah. You know what's worse as a greenhouse gas? Methane. That's why we got to get rid of the cow farts. You know what's worse than that? Water vapor. Ah, we're going to fight the CO2. You're going to fight plant food? Yeah, yeah. To match Germany's electricity demand of over 15% of EU's electricity demand. So I guess Germany uh, is about 15% of the load for the entirety of the European Union. Interesting. Solely from photovoltaic panels in Spain. All right. So remember, photovoltaic is you're taking the sun's energy and you're converting it to electricity. That's solo, solar photovoltaic. About 7% of Spain would have to be covered with solar panels, which is about... 35,000 kilometers square or square, uh, yeah, kilometers square. Spain is the best situated in Europe for solar power, better in fact than India or Southeast Asia. The required Spanish solar park, we'll call it Photovoltaic Spain, PV Spain, will have a total installed capacity of 2,000 gigawatts or almost three times the 2020 installed solar capacity worldwide of 715 gigawatts. So it'd have to have three times the size of the solar photovoltaic panels that are out there right now to electrify all of Germany, which only gives us 2% of the global annual CO2 emissions anyway. All right, but that's not enough because you need something else. So hang tight. Um, in addition, battery uh, backup storage capacity totaling 45 terawatts. A, a, a terawatt hours would have to be required. I, I, let me just, so I want to show you what the, this is nuts, man. So we're going to go, uh, I'm gonna, um, <laughs> first, what is it? We're going to read this confused about energy from the UK is interesting. A watt is one joule per second. It is a unit of power and a joule is a unit of energy. So if you have one watt device running for an hour, then it consumes one watt hour of energy. An electric heater might have a power rating of one kilowatt. So if you leave it on for an hour, it will use one kilowatt hour of energy. Two hours and two kilowatt hours. <coughs> the K here stands for a thousand watts. That's a kilowatt is 1000 watts. All right. Uh, the units are not confined to electricity. You can relatively easily calculate, for example, that one kiga, uh, kilogram, uh, kg is kilogram. I can't remember. Contains 13.9 kilowatt hours of chemical energy which will be released upon combustion, uh, burning. All right. A Watt, by the way, is named after a Scottish bloke called, I think, was it James Watt, uh, who lived long before all the climate change stuff. So let's blame him for all this since he can do a little about it. All right. But what about a kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt, and terawatt? Well, these are just orders of magnitude of energy. K is a thousand, M is a million, uh, G is a billion, and T is a tera, which is a trillion. All right. So you got a kilowatt is 1,000 watts. Uh, a megawatt is 1 million watts, a gigawatt is 1 billion watts, and a terawatt is 1 trillion watts. And he's using it in watt hours here, um, which, is, which is nuts. 
Now, can we have some perspective, please? What do these numbers mean? Example of one watt hour, a modern LED light. So this right here is 15 watts. Uh, they're using five uh, watts to power it. So if you leave it on for 12 minutes, it will consume one watt hour of energy. Uh, examples of one kilowatt hour. Things like fan heaters require between one and three kilowatts to power. So if you leave them on for an hour, it will consume between one and three kilowatt hours, depending on the setting you have the heater on. Example, one megawatt hour. A high-speed electrical train is a good example here. On average, they consume about 25 kilowatt hours of energy for every kilometer they run or kilometer they run. So for one megawatt of energy, the train can travel 40 kilometers. It is about 400 kilometers from Newcastle upon Tyne to London. So the train would require 10 megawatts of energy just to run that one way, not both. A gigawatt hour. Since Watt was Scottish, let's look at Scotland. The total electric energy consumption of Scotland in 2012 was about 25,000 gigawatt hours. Divide that by 365 in a year, we get 68.5 gigawatt hours per day, and then 24 hours in a day, 2.85 gigawatt hours per day. I can guarantee you they're using that more now because we're in 2021. So to give you an idea of a gigawatt hour, electrical energy requirement in Scotland is about one gigawatt hour every 20 minutes on average. You hear that? One gigawatt hour in Scotland every 20 minutes on average. That's in 2012. A terawatt, again using Scotland, has a population of a little over 5 million. It requires 25 terawatt hours of electrical energy each year. That's just electric. Now here's the, the real big number. Total en energy demand in the world. This includes all sources of energy, not just electricity, energy. Electrical energy, burning fuels directly, was uh, 160,000 terawatts. That's in 2015, total sources of all energy, 160,000 terawatts. Remember, a, t a terawatt is one a terawatt tr hours. A terawatt is one trillion watts. Total energy demand in the world was 160,000 terawatt hours. This equates to 21,700 kilowatt hours per person on average. Ugh, that's in 2015. All right, so there you go. All right. Good stuff. That's it. I'll put a link in the show. So let's go back. I just remember that. All right. All right. So uh, to, to produce. So uh, in addition, backup storage capacity totaling about 45 terawatt hours would be required. 45 terawatt hours would be required to power Spain. And we talk about uh, uh, we talk about Scotland uses what do we say? 65 terawatt hours a day. 68 gigawatts per day, excuse me, gigawatt hours per day, 68 gigawatt hours per day. That's what Scotland uh, uses in electricity, um, just electricity. So the total electrical energy consumption in Scotland was about 68, uh, we'll just say 68 gigawatt hours per day. Yeah. All right. Wait, we divide that one? Yeah, 68 gigawatt hours per day. Crazy, man. All right. So does that make sense? We got... Uh, Okay, so the total electrical consumption of Scotland was about 25,000 gigawatt hours divided by, by 365. Yeah, we get 68, 68.5 uh, gigawatt hours per day and then divide by uh, 2.85 gigawatt hours. All right, so every hour they're consuming 2.85 gigawatts. All right, so let's go here. So to provide sufficient storage for batteries using today's leading technology, again, we're going to need 45 terawatt hours just to power Germany on electricity alone. The leading, uh, let's see, the leading technology would require the full output of 900 Tesla gigafactories working at full capacity for a year, not compounding, not counting the replacement of the batteries every 20 years. So we need 900 Tesla gigafactories working at full capacity for one year. For the entire, not even counting the half to replace the batteries. For the entire European Union's electricity demand, six times as much would be required coupled with a battery capacity of six times higher. All right. So to keep the solar park functioning just for Germany, PV panels would need to be replaced every 15 years. It's actually a bit less, but we'll say that. We'll say every 15 years or so. Translating to an annual silicon requirement for the panels, reaching close to 10% of current global production capacity. Translating to an annual silicon 
requirement for the panel is equaling 10% of current global production capacity. This is just for Germany now, just for electricity. The silver requirement for modern PV panels powering Germany would translate to 30% of the annual global silver production. And you see where I'm going. How many solar panels does it take to recreate one? You can't. I just the answer is an infinite, an, an infinite amount. For the EU, essentially the entire annual global silicon production and three times the annual global silver production would be required for replacement only. And that's just electricity. There are currently not enough raw materials available for a battery backup. A 14-day battery storage solution for Germany would exceed the 2020 global battery production by a factor of four or five times. To produce the required batteries for Germany alone, uh, would require mining, transportation, and processing of uh, 0.4 to 0.8 billion tons of raw materials each year. 7 to 13 billion tons for a one-time setup, six times more for the entirety of Europe. The raw materials required including lithium, copper, cobalt, nickel, graphite, rare earths, and bauxite, uh, coal, and iron ore for aluminum seal. The 2020 global production of lithium, graphite, an graphite anodes, uh, cobalt or nickel would not nearly suffice by multiple factor to produce the batteries for Germany alone. Yeah. It ain't happening. Pull your head out of the ground and realize what the reality is. There's only two things to do if you're worried about CO2. Number one is you stop flying. That's all there is to it. You stop flying. You don't get on cruise ships. Someone uh, that I know... <laughs> Let's just put it this way. She enjoys flying and she enjoys traveling the world on cruise ships. And I said, and she's the biggest, like, oh my goodness, we're all going to die from global warming as she flies to Miami to get on a cruise ship to go through Europe. <laughs> just, I mean, you just, that is how you do it because you're not going to replace your energy consumption, never mind electricity, with solar or photovoltaic. It's just not happening. All right. I'll put links in the show notes. I'd like to hear your thoughts. See ya.